Welcome to Orion Today. My name is Joseph Kane, and today we have a special show for you all. It's a show about collectibles and the various types that there are. So today I'd like to introduce my first guest. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Introduce yourself to the audience. Hi, um, my name is Eric Schantz, and I'm a, a guitar collector, um, kind of on a small scale, but um, I'm mostly centered around Fender products, uh, but I also pick up um, a, a other brands as if I you know, find good deals on them or just happen to be in the right place at the right time. Okay. Well, now for a little context, Fender is a brand of guitar specifically, correct? Correct. Okay. What drew you to Fenders initially? Um, that's a good question. I uh, kind of uh, evolved into a Fender fan. I was actually, you know, being a Michigan boy uh, mm -hmm. and Gibson being uh, originally mm -hmm. based in Kalamazoo, mm -hmm. um, I always uh, pretty much just loved Gibsons and Fenders were always kind of like out of my, you know, radar. Mm -hmm. But uh, for some reason, the older I got, the more I realized the guitar that I was actually playing at the time was uh, more of a Stratocaster shape and mm -hmm. uh, uh, sim more similar to a Strat. And the uh, once I started uh, getting interested mm -hmm. in Stratocasters, I just mm -hmm. sort of gravitated in that direction and just okay. uh, continued on that path. Well, honestly, collecting is one of those hobbies that you'd say that evolves over time as you evolve. Exactly. So, considering that then, what do you have for us to show off today? Um, well, I just kind of wanted to go over the uh, different um, avenues that you have to collect. Oh, and okay. um, because uh, not everybody has a big budget, and, oh, yeah. uh, but they might still have some interest. Mm. So there are um, you know, multiple avenues to uh, start a collection. Okay. And the main three would be um, guitar effects pedals, oh, okay. amplifiers, and mm -hmm. then the guitars themselves. Oh, okay. So not just mm. the guitar, but also the like uh, accessories, exactly. one might say, that help to help them do what they do. Right. All right, so what do we have here today? Okay, so um, I'll start with the pedals, and um, I just kind of wanted to uh, show the, um, the audience that, um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. when you when you go to a garage sale or something and mm -hmm. uh, see, um, you know, what looks like an effects pedal and it uh, looks like it has some wear on it, mm -hmm. um, that would be something that you uh, probably should take some interest in if you're mm -hmm. interested in building your collection. Oh, okay. I happened to find this uh, when I was in college at a pawn shop for Ooh. $20. Really? And uh, it's an early 1970 uh, crybaby uh, back when they were owned by um, Thomas Organ, mm. you know, before, you know, the, the current... Um, Manufacturer Dunlop took over, and okay. you know it actually you know changed hands a couple of times before then. Okay. So that was kind of a cool find, and got oh. me started. You know, for inex, you know, for uh, low cost. Okay. Now, when you started collecting initially, were these for? the purpose of playing, or was it just a fascination with the instrument itself? Actually, it was strictly for playing. Okay. Um, the um, the uh, wah pedal I bought mm -hmm. strictly because I didn't have one yet and oh, I okay. wanted to try one and I didn't know at the time that it, how old it was. Um, mm -hmm. I had a, um, uh, an idea that it was old but I you know had no idea that it was like vintage. Okay, okay. So now based off that, now you mentioned the pedals. So I see a few kinds of pedals here yep. but could you elaborate a bit on these uh, ones with the knobs here? Y yeah. So uh, one of the things that I wanted to show was that, um, like, uh, the, for example, this uh, MXR flanger, which uh, Eddie Van Halen kind of made famous. Um, the uh, early, uh, early to late 70s and the, and the 60s pedals mm -hmm. uh, tend to have uh, power cords on them. Oh, okay. So if you're interested in collecting and you, you start seeing pedals somewhere with mm -hmm. power cords on them, those are usually an, a good indication that it's at mm -hmm. least um, you know, early 90s and, and older because that really uh, went out of style as, oh, pedal, okay. as people uh, began to uh, build their okay. effects pedal boards larger and larger. Oh, they didn't okay. have room for all the pedal, all the uh, chords. Okay. So they streamlined them to, you mm -hmm. know, to have their, have a common power okay. supply that fed the, all the pedals. Okay. Now, of course, we have these big boys here. Now, could you elaborate a little bit on these? Yeah, so these this is what you call a combo amplifier where it's mm. got the speaker and the amplifier in the same box. Oh, okay. And if you're looking for vintage, what you want to look for is um, for uh, vacuum tubes. Oh, oh So okay. the, the uh, old amps are all vacuum tube based mm -hmm. and uh, like the newer, um, versions are going to be solid mm -hmm. state and like mm -hmm. even in the late 60s they started to have mm -hmm. solid state amps. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So uh, I mean tube amps still persist today so mm -hmm. um, it isn't a surefire um, indication that it's uh, new or okay. that it's old if it has um, 
the tubes in it, but okay. that would be one thing to look for. Okay, okay. Now with those, the, with the you know amps here, of course we have to talk about what the amps plug into. So now you brought a uh, quite a quite a, an array of different guitars here. Right now, could you tell us a little bit about like how? How do you decide what guitar to go for? Is it purely a um, aesthetic thing, or do you go more for functionality? Um, it can be both. Um, for example, uh, this guitar was uh, is um, a modern uh, reproduction of mm -hmm. the guitar that. Um, uh, it does look. It does look familiar. Yeah. Um, that was pretty famous. Jim, yeah, Jimi Jim Hendrix. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this okay. was Jimi Hendrix's first guitar, and these were very common, uh, sold in the Sears catalog under oh, the Dan Electro wow. name and the Silvertone name. Oh, wow. So the, uh, Jimi Hendrix's first guitar was one that looked almost just like, exactly like this, a different color. Oh, okay. Um, and like the, these modern reproductions can mm -hmm. be had for about $400 new. Oh, okay, okay. So it's not, so collecting isn't necessarily about, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the vintage, uh, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's actual vintage, and then there's modern reproduction vintage, which gives okay. you the, uh, you know, the pride of ownership of having something mm -hmm. that's you know from that era but okay. without you know the price tag of a, the true the, vintage piece oh now that, i'm sure that really would help out a lot now you know it, all things considered there now this is a very very cool piece so could you explain this one a little bit yeah so this is a uh, reproduction of um not a not a straight up reproduction mm -hmm. but it's done in the uh style of the italian guitars from the 60s oh okay. so this is uh designed by an american mm. maker uh but uh, built in indonesia to keep the price down oh okay. but um okay. if you're you know if you like that aesthetic mm -hmm. you know it's something that you can be had for about a thousand dollars instead of having to pay for you know the vintage price tag okay so like so when it comes to collecting that it just really does depend on the collector you yes. can collect just you know, if you're going for the classic, the original stuff, or the reproductions that give you the give you the feel without breaking the bank. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Now, considering those, I know the audience would definitely want to see some of the prizes of your collection. So, what do you what what do you want to show off? Um, well. Here's a good example. This is a uh, Fender Custom Shop guitar oh. that um, is a reproduction of a uh, 1961 Stratocaster. Oh, okay. And uh, this is as close as you can get to having a real 1961 Strat without having oh, to, wow. you know, pay the thousands of dollars it would cost you to get one. Oh, that is beautiful. So this is uh, a Custom Shop guitar that was built, you know, by Fender, mm -hmm. but uh, spec, um, you know, the specifications come from a shop called Wildwood out in Colorado. Oh, okay. So it's gotten to the point now where certain dealers have ideas about you, you know what they think their customers are going to want okay. and they'll have custom specifications to the custom shop on what exactly they want okay all right now considering that considering that in the various avenues what type of uh, resources do you think a burgeoning collector might need if they really want to you know try to dive in whether it be for aesthetic purposes or for getting the real classic vintage stuff yeah. Um, so probably the primary resource is a mm. website called Reverb.com. Reverb.com? Yeah, okay. which is basically eBay for uh, guitar stuff. Oh, okay, okay. But it's guitar-centric. Mm -hmm. Well, there's other music stuff on there too, but, oh, it's, okay. but it's basically all music stuff. So, but for those that don't, they, they, you know, thrift storing and you know, garage hopping, that sort of stuff, is it just as easily a way to get started? Oh yes, of course. Okay. Um, but uh, do your research online because mm -hmm. sometimes it's easy to get fooled by th thinking that you're looking at a vintage piece, but okay. it's actually a reproduction that might be worth hundreds mm. less. So gotcha. uh, the one danger that I will warn you is that mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to go in and pay, you know, high vintage price for something that's a modern reproduction and, okay. and uh, be scammed that way. Oh yeah, definitely it's something to look out for. Now, and thank you so much for sharing this with our audience. You're welcome. Nice meeting and you. Remember, check, make sure to check out those, uh, those resources, and uh, we'll be right back with our next collector. Hey, it's Owen TV here. Now, have you ever had the urge to create your own TV show, or just wanted to see what goes behind the scenes of making one? Well, we have just the program for you. Owen TV offers production classes, which allow you to take control and create the programs you want them to be. To get started, all you have to do is sign up for a free orientation and then register for one of our production courses. For more information, feel free to call us at 248-393-1060 
or go to orionontv.org and click register now to sign up for classes. We hope to see you soon. And welcome back to Orion Today. I was, I'm your host, Joe Kane, and today we have, as I said before, we're talking about collectibles and their collectors, and I've got another collector that's going to share their collection with us. So go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. My name's George Pantelamon. I'm a comic book collector. I love horror movies and video games, so I brought here my uh, Spawn collection. All right. Yep. Now... You, you bring up Spawn. Yep. Now, let, tell us a little bit about the character of Spawn. Yep. So Spawn's an interesting character. You know, mm -hmm. he's an anti-hero, mm -hmm. so we don't know if he's good or bad, so I like that idea behind him. Mm -hmm. um, he's an ex-CIA uh, assassin. You know, he gets backstabbed. He gets sent to hell, brought back, because he wants to, you know, regain his love for his wife. So mm -hmm. I really like that backstory. Okay, yep. okay. Yep. Very interesting backstory. Yep. Now, for clarity's sake, <laughs> This is not what you would call an all-ages book, am I right? No, sir. <laughs> all right. Now, the publisher is Image Comics. Now, yep. Image is what you would call one of the top three, yep. uh, just beneath Marvel and DC, right? Yep. So that carries a very interesting brand with it, doesn't yep. it? Yes, it does. So what I like about Image, it was, mm -hmm. the, uh, like you said, it was a third one, mm -hmm. and it was created by a bunch of artists like Todd McFarlane because mm -hmm. they wanted full copyright of their art. Okay. So... You know, if you work for Marvel and stuff like that, you'd have to give a certain percentage. Mm. So this was created so all the artists uh, control 100% of the copyright. So I really love that. Honestly, that yeah. is pretty great, yep. especially in the world we live in now. Yep. Now, if anyone can see the books that you have here, yep. say that there, there are some very special ones. So yep. take us through some of, the, some of your collection. Here. Yep. So let's start off right from the beginning. Right here, we have a spawn number one here. This is uh, CGC 9.8 signed. This has uh, Todd McFarlane signed here. Okay. Mm -hmm. It also has George Perez. So I like this mm. one for the first one. Uh, fun fact here, if this were to be uh, a, U a UPC barcode here, mm. it would be worth a lot more. So. Oh, really? So yeah. that's not the original number one? Yeah. Okay. Well, honestly, I'd yeah. still say a number one counts as a number one. Yep. Okay. Now, with that being the first issue, yeah. what would you say is probably uh, another fa favorite issue? Yep. Like, obviously, not every number yep. one is going to be it. Correct. Uh, show us another one. So, another one that I love, just quickly here, I really love the artwork here. Mm -hmm. This is Spawn 77, a little mm -hmm. bit later in the series. Um, you know, this is Angel Spawn. You know, I said he was from hell, so mm -hmm. this is quite the opposite. <laughs> so, it's a fun collector one. I really like the art on this guy right okay. here. Yep. Very cool, yep. very cool. Now, considering the fact that we got so many here, yep. like uh, Angel Spawn is a yep. little further down the series, Correct. right? Now, when it comes to collecting, do you have a, any particulars that you look for? Like, are they just your favorite issues, yep. or do you look for value? So, How do you look? Uh, personally, I would like to collect all the first 10 signed. Mm, so right okay. now I'm at six. I'm missing number three. Oh, okay. So right here I have number two. So I'm trying to complete mm. the first ten mm -hmm. set. That would be my dream. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So I imagine those are pretty hard to track down. Yep, yep. Okay, okay. So you got the first ten here. Now, what prompted you to grab some of these other ones outside of the first ten? Were yep. they just what was available, yep. or like so for example, um, this one right here? This is a Spawn of the Dead. Oh, okay. So I'm, I like, like The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead, exactly. Oh, okay. So a lot of the Spawn comics, they do homages to different mm. covers like Spider-Man. Oh, okay. And this one's an homage to uh, The Walking Dead. It's a oh, series okay. I really love. Mm. So I'm glad to have this one. I really like the artwork on this one. Yep. Okay. Okay. Now, now, as our audience will also realize, yep. all of these are in very particular protective cases. Correct. Now... This is what it, these are what is known as CGC graded comics. Yep. Could you explain those a little bit to us? Yep. So if we take a look here, if we take two side by side, you'll see there's a yellow cup, a top and a blue top. Mm -hmm. When you have a yellow top right here, you know it's signed. The okay. blue one is unsigned. Oh, okay. Uh, the grading is always the same, 9.8. That's from 0 to 10. So it really mm -hmm. depends on the quality. Okay. of the comics so obviously the higher the number the mm -hmm. better 
All right. There's maybe a 9.9 .9 or 10, but those are almost impossible to oh, find. Okay. Oh, I can only imagine. Yep. I, I mean, there's, uh, you almost could have, they'd have to be right off the press to Correct. even attempt a uh, 9.9. .9. Yep. I mean, is it even possible to get a 10? Uh, no, I've never seen one. I've seen one 9.9, .9, but it's worth like 10 <laughs> times, maybe 100 times what I paid for mine. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Now, you brought mostly Spawn with yep. you today. Like, what other characters do you like to collect? Yep. So I would like to collect my another, another superhero I like is Batman. Oh, okay, so okay, there's, Batman fan. Yep, so I like Batman and Spawn, and there's this Frank Miller edition, <laughs> Spawn and Batman. Oh. <laughs> I would really like that to have that for my collection. So, okay, yep. okay. Well, I imagine that one's quite difficult to track down, too. Yep. Now, um, aside from the Frank Miller, Batman, Spawn, yeah. what other books are you kind of on the look for? Like, and like, how do you look for them? So I pretty much just go on eBay, Okay. And I just see what's selling, and I see what I like. I'm big on the art. Okay. I've okay. also collected Pokemon cards oh, and sports okay. cards, so that's oh, kind of my background. Now I hear those. Yeah. Uh, I hear those uh, collectors' fields are a little more bloodthirsty. Oh yes, <laughs> that's why I kind of moved to comics. You oh, know? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Plus, I think they present a lot nicer because they're oh, larger. Oh yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. You could definitely. You could mount. There are ways to mount wall mount yep. them. You can put them on like a mantle, like these. Uh, these could definitely spruce up a room. One might say. Yep. For sure. Okay. Now, like, what? Now, in terms of as a collector, yeah. Aside from the Frank Miller Spawn Batman, yeah. What's a what's one that's on like the uh, next on your wish list? Like, what yeah. are you currently looking for? So, uh, there's one Spawn I really want. Mm. It's technically even before this one, the oh. original. It's a Malibu Sun. It's like oh, it's Malibu. a very rare. Okay. The cover is not that nice, but it's mm -hmm. technically the first one. So that's okay. my dream comic. I would love to get that one. Well, uh, happy hunting in that regard. Thank you Thank so you. much for showing us your collection. Yep. And that's it for this segment, but stay tuned because we'll be right back. OAN TV invites you to take part in our 10-week video production class. The class meets on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offers instruction on studio production, field production, and non-linear editing. Upon completion of the class, you get access to ON TV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. The cost is $30 for Lake Orion residents, $60 for non-residents. For more information, give ON TV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. And welcome back to Orion Today. I'm your host, Joe Kane. And this collector that we have with us today is a little, little different than the ones we've, done, we've talked to today. Now, go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, what you have to share with us today. Yeah, sure. So my name is Christine Kitchens. I have some very nerdy stuff to share with you today. <laughs> oh. And so, you know, <laughs> Before I get started, Joe, I have to ask, mm. do you ever want to hit your friends with swords? All the time, honestly. See, they're per So, <laughs> if you have this feeling, like I imagine many people do out here, then LARPing is for you. Now, I've heard this term, but go ahead and share with the audience what LARPing is. Sure. So, LARPing, I guess it's better to take a couple of steps back and mm. say, you know, are you familiar with D&D? &D? Tabletop? pen and pencil, oh, dragons, oh, yeah. everyone screaming at each other in a room. A lot of dice. A lot yep. of dice, a mm -hmm. lot of dice. Yeah, that's right. Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> is a good starting point. Oh, yeah. But there are some people where paper and dice mm -hmm. are not nearly enough. And so mm -hmm. what <laughs> follows that is live action role playing, i.e. LARPing. Where are you sure that's not just for theater kids? It's both. There's a surprising <laughs> overlap between theater kids and people who do LARPing. But I knew it. <laughs> so this is so what people will do when they go LARPing is mm -hmm. they will go out in the woods mm -hmm. and they will dress up as their characters okay. in their world and they mm. will go on quest and fight baddies. Okay. And a lot of the stuff that I have in front of us is from more of a fantasy type LARP. Okay. But you can have people who do cyberpunk LARPs. You can Ooh. have people who do horror LARPs because they're Ooh. really into the Cthulhu stuff. Okay. So as many playbooks as there are out mm -hmm. there, there is a LARP out there. Okay. And in fact, my partner just went to a Vampire the Masquerade LARP this weekend where uh, he's trying desperately to avoid being assassinated all the time. 
But Fine. that tracks. I digress. Okay. That's his problem. <laughs> We're here to talk about this stuff today. All right. So, so uh, where should we start with these? Uh, various items. Okay, so yeah. what I have in front of you is what you will commonly have people talk about mm -hmm. in the LARPing community as their phys rep. Okay. So physical representation, because oh, okay. if everybody's just out there in their Hawaiian shirts waving swords, it doesn't quite create that ambiance you want, right? Unless you have a certain scene or That's true, scenery. unless you are doing a <laughs> Hawaiian LARP. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, in order to really set that scene mm. to make people feel really get into it, mm -hmm. it's important to have these costuming pieces. Okay. And not only are these aesthetically pleasing, mm. but in a lot of games, each of these fizz reps actually have value to them. Okay. So for example, oh, if we look oh, over here at oh, this yes. leather piece, okay. which is something one of my partner owns, it's very it's very sturdy, very oh, heavy, oh. but yeah, he yeah. has actual armor points coming off of this. Oh, okay. So, all right. So there's a lot of incentive to have good armor because mm. you can say, oh, you know, I have 10 defense. It doesn't mm. work as hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see? Good okay. stuff. Very. Yeah. Very. And you, <laughs> speaking of overlaps in communities, a lot mm -hmm. of LARPers are also people who go to Ren Fair a whole lot. That so you'll sense. notice that a lot of these things on this table are mm. things you might also see there. Okay. So another thing we have here is a, I believe this is a gauntlet or a wrist split. Okay. You tie it onto your wrist. Oh, oh. Here you oh, go. Do you okay. feel cool and badass? I kind of do, Notice the actually. nice eye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Ooh. we also right. do potions and spells. Oh. So these are pretty okay. cool. Yeah. So you have people because, you know, not everybody can run around in the field and fight mm. swords. You know, some oh, people yeah. are dealing with mobility issues. Mm. Um, they might have just done surgery, something like that, you know. Oh, okay, so, so there's a lot of accommodating and yeah. uh, inclusivity focused. Exactly. In oh, so if you great. don't want to play a physical character, mm -hmm. you could play an alchemist instead. You can make potions, make poisons, okay. and you got to have your fizzer up for that as well. All right. But uh, let's say you do want to get in a fight. Oh, now. I'm not seeing a lot that is good for combat. Did you bring something with you? I for did. That? I did bring some things. Yeah, okay. But first, we start small. Oh. oh <laughs> yeah. Okay. That little dagger, it kind of has like a fire yeah. element to it. So would that this be like an enchanted weapon? It would be an enchanted weapon, okay. yes. If you want to take a fill from it, it's oh, right. just foam. It doesn't hardly hurt anything. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's really good. Okay. And so people might use this as a throwing knife, like oh. so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and at All that right. point, I might declare damage and then it might harm you. Okay. But, you know, we have some smaller weapons, like oh, yes. these knives. These are magic spells that are oh, also okay. throwing packets oh. that you throw at people. Ah. But sometimes <laughs> you've got to break out oh, the big guns. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is. Yeah. So this is the fizz wrap <laughs> of a great sword. Okay. And you'll notice that a lot of these weapons are pretty elaborate and well decorated, mm -hmm. but you know, these kinds of things are more for people who have been doing this for a while and mm -hmm. are really monetarily investing in this. <laughs> and so these are really awesome and beautiful pieces. And there are people who actually make a living making props for LARPers. Oh, wow. Yeah, so somebody makes these swords and <laughs> makes a very pretty penny off of it. It is based off of. Uh, one of the swords in the Brandon Sanderson Stormlight Archives. Oh, popular yeah. series. Very popular series. All but right. yeah, and so you'll notice, I'm try not to take anything out here. <laughs> yes. So when you're managing large oh, weapons wow. like this, it's really <laughs> important that you don't hurt people, right? True. Because true. even if this is made of foam, this mm -hmm. could hurt you. Ah, yes. And so that's oh. another really mm -hmm. important rule in LARP mm. is there are certain places where you can attack. Okay. Can't go for the head, oh. can't go for more sensitive parts. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, makes sense. Yeah, so, but oh. there are a lot of really cool very, weapon styles yeah, out there. It's very soft, yeah. So what you probably don't want to be going into a LARP Ooh. is oh. with these. Oh, no. Yeah, so number one thing is when you go to a LARP, mm -hmm. you need to make sure that whatever fizz rep you have is safe for people. Oh, because okay. you are still hitting people with things and you mm. kind of want to soften that blow as much yeah. as possible. And notice that these are, these appear to be much harder with, even despite the rounded ends. Yeah. Yeah. This is hard plastic. This is mm. something you might see for people who mm -hmm. are trying to learn actual sword techniques. Oh, Because okay. there are, speaking, like I said, there are a lot of overlap in LARPs. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who come okay. to LARPs who also mm -hmm. go to sword clubs and practice things. Mm -hmm. And so you got to remember that if you are one of those people okay. that you can't just show up with this stuff, mm -hmm. you got to 
You got to put a foam noodle on it. You got to make it soft. Okay, but this, but so this would be something to actually use for actual martial arts training. Yeah. So this is definitely a no-no. That for, is definitely a no-no. No. Okay. But there are some LARPs that go, do go harder than others. So that makes sense. Yeah. So for example, <laughs> in Southeast Michigan, there mm. are quite a few LARPs actually. Okay. There is carps, which is a soft, soft touch LARP. That's okay. where they have some pretty strict rules around. Mm what you can fight with and what you can't. Okay. And then there's, um, I'm trying to remember what the other one is. It's Ooh. called Kanar. Hmm. And they are a little more feisty. Oh. So they will, I think, allow head hits or something like that. Oh, so no. it's really important that so, if you are interested in this, uh -huh. that you do your research and you know what you're going into. So whether or not you're into a contact sport, as it were, or maybe right. just a little more casual, yeah. or some more softball-y. Exactly. Say. Okay. So yeah, there's a lot of options that usually meet over the mm -hmm. weekend once a month. Okay. There are also okay. options out there where they meet for whole weeks, oh, such wow. as, uh, I'm trying to remember what it's called. There's one up in, oh. in um, Canada that is a really big deal oh, really? where you can go and do this for a whole week in a whole made up village. And it's very serious. Oh, I envy people of those resources. Mm -hmm. Wow. But there are probably people that look forward to these sorts of things all year round, one might say. Mm -hmm. Now, have, have you been into any of those before? Or? I have, yes. Oh, okay. So one of the ones that I mentioned that is in Holly, Michigan here, mm -hmm. is carps. Okay. Like the fish, you know? Oh. <laughs> and if you go and you Google it, the website will pop uh -huh. up and okay. you can go and play it. They have all kinds of different race characters you can mm -hmm. play. They have all kinds of magics. Okay. I have gone to a few of these, mm -hmm. but, uh, Unfortunately, I'm a little bit of a delicate flower, oh, so okay. running around is a little hard on me, but mm -hmm. I do like the winter ones okay. where they're at least a little less treacherous. Well, thank you so much for sharing that information with us. And for any burgeoning LARPers out there, do your research. Definitely do your Googling. But thank you so much for sharing this with us. And I believe that is about it for today. So thank you so much for joining us, <laughs> as well as the audience. <laughs> And that was Orion today. I was Joe Kane. Y'all have a good night now. <laughs>